ready for the schoolyard showdown? Wow, who would win? Would it be President Trump or former Vice President Joe Biden? We're talking about going out to the schoolyard behind the schoolhouse or whatever and throwing down. So who's your money on? Is it the president, the former vice president, or are you like me and think the whole thing is ridiculous? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. All I can say for sure is the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I am back. So far, so good. I am Jeff McAleer, your host here at The Daily Dope, as well as the Grand Poobah of the GamingGang.com. So welcome aboard. I know things have been pretty crazy since my heart attack a week ago today. I almost feel like calling it H-Day Plus 7 right now. And uh, Wargaming... Uh, fans out there, some of my friends who watch who are war gamers kinda kinda get that. Sort of like D Day plus seven. Well it's H Day plus seven. And uh, I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, I got a whole slew of different medications that I'm taking right now. So far I haven't had really any kind of bad reactions or bad side effects that I can tell. So that's pretty good. And once again, just want to say thank you so much to everyone with the well wishes. I know there are people still finding out that uh, I almost uh, crossed over the River Styx last week. So I am still receiving some emails and tweets and so on and so forth telling me to uh, take it easy and put my health first. And of course, that is obviously what I'm doing. So, unfortunately, the past few days haven't been shows. Uh, I had some doctor appointments. The other day, I just was kind of tired. So, I've been told not to push myself. So, there you have it. All right, so I've got some news today. So, that's going to be pretty cool. And I am going to unbox Grim Slingers, the Northern Territory, which is the first expansion to the card dueling game, Grim Slingers, from... Greenbrier Games. So I am looking forward to taking a peek to see what's inside this because I happen to, uh, I like Grimslingers. I like Grimslingers quite a bit. All right. So before I get into that, let's jump into the news. And I have to mention newcomer Weird Giraffe Games has launched a Kickstarter to bring their first game to the masses. And I've got the dope on fire in the library. Fire in the Library is a press-your-luck game from Weird Giraffe Games by Tony Miller and John Prather, with art by Beth Sobel and Katie Kiao. Sorry, Katie, if I got that wrong. Players are heroic librarians rescuing books to accumulate knowledge and earn bravery, all while avoiding the flames before the library collapses. The game is easy to learn, simple enough for kids to play and enjoy, with depth and strategy that will keep serious gamers coming back. It in includes increasing intensity. Books increase in value all the way until the end, but no one knows who will take the last turn. Players must decide if they should save tools for an epic late game point swing or grab points now to take an early lead. There are AI variants as well, so you can experience the excitement of fire in the library on your own with a solo game or spice up a multiplayer match by adding new challenges. History is burning. Take chances. Be brave. Save books. Weird Giraffe Games does have a quick Kickstarter video that I wanted to share with you. So why don't we kick back and take a peek. Argentinian author Jorge Luis Borges once said, I've always imagined that paradise will be a kind of library, and this so happens to be where you find yourself today. It took a while to earn your position as a librarian, but it was worth the perseverance. Every day you find yourself amongst the collected knowledge of humankind, but today is no ordinary day. Today it could all go up in smoke, because there's a fire in the library. 
Fire in the Library is a push-your-luck game for 1-6 to six conscientious librarians with an estimated 30-minute playtime. Librarians race to save the most knowledge from the library and prove their bravery in the process. Fire in the Library is quick to learn and easy to play. Expect engaging turns as each player's actions may cause the fire to spread, which not only brings the game closer to an end, but also increases the value of rescued books as their rarity rises. Strategic manipulation of the variable turn order and the variety of tools available will aid the canny librarian on their path to victory. Hi, I'm Tony Miller, co-designer of Fire in the Library. The crew at Weird Draft Games and I are super excited to get the game into your hands, but we need your support to make it happen. Check out the page below to learn more about this game and to discover what other people are saying about it. We genuinely appreciate every pledge because your support brings us closer to making Fire in the Library into a reality. From myself and everybody at Weird Giraffe Games, thanks for watching. That video actually ended a bit more abruptly than I had recalled. <laughs> so, sorry about the few extra seconds there of just blankness. Fire in the Library is for one to six players, ages eight and up, and plays in around 30 minutes. The Kickstarter is already fully funded. I believe it's at about 500% funded, and it will run through April 12th. You can score a copy at a very friendly price of $19. That's right, you can actually get Fire in the Library for a $19 pledge. Seems like uh, that's really good deal. Pretty good deal. Anyway, I don't really know anything about the game. I can say that on the Kickstarter, there are quite a few playthroughs and how to plays and reviews from various people. A few are shills. Yes, a few are the known shills that just hand them some cash. They'll say any Kickstarter is good. But there are some videos from folks who are not uh, known for that. All right, anyway, moving right along. I tell you, do the people at Renegade Game Studios even sleep? Because they've revealed another new game which is coming this July, and it's called Spy Club. And it should appeal to gamers of all ages as you look to solve a variety of mysteries. Here's the dope. Spy Club is the next big release from the incredible team at Foxtrot Games, who are behind the smash hits Lanterns, The Harvest Festival, The Fox in the Forest, Sunday Split, and World's Fair 1893. Okay, well, Lanterns and World's Fair are, are smash hits. I don't know if I would necessarily call the other two titles smash hits. But regardless, you can find clues and catch the culprit like your favorite neighborhood detectives. Work together in this cooperative game to confirm clues and uncover the mystery. But watch out. Don't let the suspect interfere or escape before you can crack the case. Unlock new adventures and other secrets that change the game every time you play. With 40 replayable modules and a way to play five games connected together, you'll always have fun stories to tell and new content to explore. Spy Club features working together to find clues and catch the culprit, you unlock new adventures with every game you play, and as I previously mentioned, there are 40 replayable modules. Spy Club is for 2-4 players, ages 10 and up, plays in about 45 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $45 when it arrives in July. Hmm, looks interesting, interesting, although I have to admit, Spy Club doesn't really seem like the right name for this game. Maybe Sleuth Club? Because you're not taking on the roles of spies. You're taking on the roles of, like, amateur detectives, right? I don't know. I just thought Spy Club was a kind of oddball title for the game. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad game. Just saying Spy Club is kind of an oddball name. All right, one thing I should mention, should have mentioned this, as I began the show, there is chat available both through Twitch as well as YouTube. It's just not on screen. That's how I keep the uh, kind of lunatic uh, commenters sometimes <laughs> at bay. Thankfully, I don't get too many of those. 
But I uh, did want to mention that, yes, chat is available. All right, so WizKids have, has a new game that just arrived on the scene, and it's a family-friendly dice-flicking game called Kung Fu Zoo. And I've got the dope. If you hung around your local zoo after it closed for the night, you'd see the nighttime rituals of the exotic animals you visited during the day. You'd see cages being cleaned and souvenir stands being restocked. If you were lucky, you might catch an impromptu seal show or Moonlight Nightingale concert. And if you stayed late enough, long after the last employee had left for the night, you might see the greatest and most secret of all zoo attractions, the late night Kung Fu fights. That's right. Welcome to Kung Fu Zoo. Kung Fu Zoo is a dice flicking dexterity game for two to four players. You control a team of highly trained animals from crocodiles to zebras in a kung fu battle against your rivals. Who will be tonight's champions of the zoo? Grab some dice and find out. In Kung Fu Zoo, players use six-sided animal dice to do battle in an enclosed arena. There are two gameplay variants, cage battle and points match. In either variant, players start with a team of dice animals, but the some but the similarities, whoa, similarities, Jeff. Stop there. In a cage battle, players take turns flicking their animals into the arena. Your goal is to knock your opponent's animals onto their backs, stunning them, or through holes on the board, the cages. You win the match when all of your opponent's animals are stunned or in cages. First player to win three matches wins the game overall. In a points match, players take turns flicking their animals into the arena. Your goal is to score 21 points before your opponent. Points are awarded at the end of each round based on the position of your dice that are left on the board. As previously mentioned, Kung Fu Zoo is for 2-4 to four players ages 10 and up, plays in around 5-10 to 10 minutes, and carries an MSRP of $29.95. So, the first rule about Kung Fu Zoo is we don't talk about Kung Fu Zoo. <laughs> Seems like this could be a, a fun kind of family game, get the kids into it. Uh, I like the dice. The dice look pretty cool with the various unique symbols representing each of the animals. I don't know, though. A $30 price tag on a game that takes 10 minutes, though? I don't know. I would have to get a closer look at this just to see uh, what you're getting for the $30, or I should say $29.95. All right, moving right along. There's always news cooking from Modifius Entertainment, and of course, they've got another news story that's just hit, and I'll have another one tomorrow. Bit bigger news, I believe. And it is the new release of Legacy Life Among the Ruins 2nd Edition, which is now available in PDF. And I've got the dope. What happens after the apocalypse? Your ancestors survived thanks to luck, preparation, or pure grit. Now it's time to leave their shelters and start rebuilding the world. But the wasteland has other inhabitants, families with different philosophies and abilities, secretive factions with their own agendas, and bizarre monsters stalking the ruins. As generations pass and your family evolves to suit this new world, what stories will you tell? In this role-playing game, you'll build your own unique post-apocalyptic landscape, home to scattered families of survivors. Take control of a family, play the brave heroes that define them, and guide them through the grand sweep of history. Key features of the game include from grand strategy to desperate struggle, shift freely between commanding the movements of spies and armies and fighting monsters in a ruined wasteland using the fast and dramatic rules powered by the Apocalypse Engine. Interesting, the Apocalypse Engine, not 2D20. Hmm. It's a game of histories. Write the saga of your family over generations and draw on your ancestors' powers, 
even as you face the unexpected consequences of their actions. Endless variety. 11 family types and 13 character types create hundreds of possibilities, each with its own meaning for the story you're telling. Get the ground running. Start playing today with the included quick start, complete with five pairs of families and characters, story prompts, and a sunless world filled with hungry specters. The 305-page Legacy Life Among the Ruins 2nd Edition Core Book is available through Drive-Thru RPG and PDF, and it's available for $21.22. Kind of a strange price tag on that. This seems pretty interesting. This seems as if it might share a few... I don't want to necessarily say mechanics, but influences, possibly from Greg Stafford's Pendragon, because Pendragon, same sort of thing. You're actually, you're role-playing your knight, but you will go through various generations, especially if you're playing the great Pendragon campaign, which is amazing. Anyway, so I would, uh, I'd be interested in taking a peek at this. And it's, I also thought that's kind of unusual that it's actually built upon the Apocalypse engine and not a 2d20 so uh, I have to take a peek I'll have to take a peek but this does seem pretty interesting and it is only available in PDF it's not available in print at least not yet and as I mentioned if you are going to drive through RPG always swing by the gaminggang.com first click on one of our banners if you happen to make a purchase at drive through then we get a small portion of that sale and uh, trust me these days <laughs> every little bit is going to be critical to keeping the gaming gang around okay so my final news piece i have to say i don't really talk much about video games but when i do you already know it's either something i've been playing and having a great time with or it's a series which i pick up every year religiously and out of the park baseball happens to fall into that latter category and this year's edition is now available here's the dope out of the park developments an official licensee of mlb.com the major league baseball players association and milb.com announced today that out of the park baseball 19 is available worldwide ahead of the start of the 2018 Major League Baseball season on March 29th. OOTP 19 offers dozens of exciting new features and deep improvements to its award-winning gameplay, including a dramatic 3D in-game engine that shows players pitching, hitting, fielding, and running the bases. Images of the new in-game engine can be found uh, actually in the uh, slides that I'm actually showing off out of the park baseball 19 includes new 3d stadiums and 3d player models with improved on-field movements including running sliding jumping and throwing new in-game screen design for an optimized visual dugout 2008 roster sets with all opening day major league baseball rosters as well as the complete minor league system from AAA to Rookie Leagues and the Arizona Fall League. All Major League and over a thousand Minor League players have been rated and it's based on the popular Zips player projection system. There's also the eight International Leagues as well as independent Minor Leagues in the U.S. And they also return this year with accurate rosters. There's rewritten scouting reports that give a more detailed and realistic look at players. There's new tournament modes. Create a standalone tournament bracket and draw any teams from history into it. The possibilities are endless. An ultra-realistic AI roster management and in-game decision engine. There's a reworked ratings module. User voting for end-of-season awards. And much, much more. This summer, Out of the Park Developments will unveil an exciting new online mode called Perfect Team. An open beta will happen this spring, and the company will announce more information soon. I go way back with OOTP. As a huge baseball 
fan, I can tell you straight up that nothing comes close to out of the park baseball as far as realistically simulating the sport. And it doesn't matter if you're replaying a season drawn from the annals of history or if you're taking a look into the future of America's pastime. As I mentioned previously, OOTP 19 is available right now for PC, Mac, and Linux for $39.99. And no joke, if you are a fan of baseball and you're not necessarily looking for, say, like MLB The Show, the whole you know, controller and it's all, it's not all your reflexes, but it's a lot based on your success and failure in MLB The Show based on your reflexes and how quick you are with the controller. Out of the Park Baseball is nothing like that. It is, you can you can choose to just be a general manager for a team. You just make the moves and allow the, the game itself to simulate each game of the season. You can recreate the entire history of baseball with it. Uh, I have done stuff in the past with previous editions, whereas I would just take the history of baseball up to like 1951 and just simulate it. Just simulate it so all the different records, you know, Hall of Famers might be different. I've had I've had uh, simulations where Babe Ruth doesn't become the all-time home run leader because he got hurt during his career. I've had that happen to Ted Williams. I've had Ted Williams become like the greatest hitter of all time because he didn't go and serve in World War II or Korea. Just really wild, wild stuff. So anyway, so definitely if you are a fan of baseball at all and you're looking for something that's going to be really entertaining for PC, Mac, or Linux, I cannot recommend Out of the Park Baseball high enough. And I am looking forward to checking out because I've, I've already got a review copy. I have not cracked it open yet, but I am looking to see what's going on with the 3D stadiums because in the past, they introduced it a couple years ago. I was like, yeah, it's not all that great. So I would just play OOTP in its normal mode, uh, kind of like a play-by-play, like radio play-by-play. But uh, I, I want to take a peek because I want to see if they got little players moving around and, and things like that. All right, so that is the news for today. All right, let me grab a sip here. And I should point out, I am not drinking Diet Pepsi. Uh, I am actually, I'm not drinking much soda at all, really. I'm drinking a lot of water. A little bit of juice, but a lot of water. Uh, I am drinking Diet Right Zero. So there's no caffeine, no calories, no sodium. So yes, I can't just give up diet soda completely. So I'm going with uh, one of the more healthy <laughs> variants, I guess, or healthy options out there. All right, today I'm not gonna yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much about you know what's what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, I will a little bit tomorrow uh, because uh, I should be able to get. A, I'll have a show tomorrow, uh, and I should have shows Monday through Thursday of next week but then on Friday I have I have to meet with my cardiologist again and uh, there's they're talking another stent in my heart so yeah that's not gonna be all that fun take me uh, take me out of uh, out of action for two three days but I don't know when they they want to do that so anyway but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow so I have Rimslingas, the Northern Territory. And strangely enough, I keep wanting to say Northern Territories. In fact, I just did in chat saying, stay tuned for my unboxing. But no, it's the Northern Territory. Ay, 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 Jeff, I tell you. Hey, at least I got most of it right. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that down there and let's move over to the other camera. There we go. So, Grim Slingers is designed, illustrated, and written by Stephen S. Gibson. 
So he wears a lot of hats as far as Grimslingers. And once again, for this expansion, the Northern Territory, same thing. It's pretty much all Steven. I would take a stab that I'm guessing Julie Ahern may have done some of the story aspects to it. So let's get this open here. And I can tell you right now, I think I'm going to have to pop on the old reading specs to get a better look. And strangely enough, this sounds really odd, but I, the, the medications I'm taking, I, it's, it's weird. It's like, uh, I don't know, my vision's not as clear as it was before. I don't know. It's weird. I have no idea. I also find that... Uh, having kind of a hard time focusing on something for an especially long time. So for an example, uh, working on the website, doing news pieces and that, I would usually just be able to do, you know, four, five, six, ten news pieces, yeah, all right after each other. And uh, I'm finding that my patience is only like for two. Then I have to go take a break, do something, come back, do a couple more. Really bizarre. All right, so with Grimslingers, the Northern Territory, it's an expansion to the Grimslingers core game, which refines and redefines all aspects of the game while adding more to what players love. Improved gameplay and strategic choices in player versus player, along with a plethora of new solo slash co-op content for players to delve into for many hours. And one of the cool things about Grimslingers that I found is you kind of play it the way you want to play it. If you wanted to play it as just kind of a dueling game between two players, you can do that. If you want to play it as kind of a, a big, epic, uh, create-your-own-adventure where you're battling, like, non-player character monsters and stuff like that, you can do that. Also a solo mode, too. So lots of different play aspects. Let's see what we've got. I believe we got some new character archetypes. So we got a rule booklet. We got the area booklet. I am. Oh, wait. Now, I guess we could probably take a peek at the area booklet. We've got the Child of Light, which is campaign booklet. And this is where it's sort of your create your own adventure. I am not going to look too deeply at this. So I'm just letting you know, because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. All right, so we got the rule booklet. Honestly, this rule booklet seems longer than the previous release. Yeah, we're looking at 38 pages, but it's not all going to be rules. So we've got a look at the components of the game here. We've got an introduction. In a land beyond God's reckoning is a place called the Forgotten West. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it does have, uh, Grimslingers does have kind of a, kind of a cool, weird West slash steampunkish slash fantasy, fantasy magic vibe to it. It's a very, very original setting. I'll tell you that much. It's not just your your typical Weird West stuff. It's it's not as if, oh, hey, let's rip off Deadlands and create a card game. No, that's not what Grimslingers is all about, and that's certainly not what Greenbrier Games did. So, talking about getting started, talking about abbreviations and terminology, action cards, spell cards, the elements, light and dark, signatures, Skill, skill cards, I should say. How to spend your resources. My understanding is there, there are a lot of kind of rule changes in this expansion that it's radically changing the way Grimslingers plays. I don't know for a fact, but that is kind of the vibe I have gotten uh, about this expansion, that it's, it's going to radically change some gameplay elements and it's going to focus a lot on what a lot of the the players like best about the game 
All right, so we've got EP trackers and animas. We've got the characters, so it's going to talk about the new characters. And yes, you're going to be able to play a dog, a cat, I think a bear. Uh, no, maybe not a bear. I think there's like a bear um, sidekick. Got target cards versus setup. That's one of the aspects of Grimslingers. It's pretty cool when you're starting, uh, when you're playing like a, a multiplayer kind of duel where you actually have to target other players. It's pretty cool. And what I'm going to do when I do the review for this, and unfortunately the review for this probably won't be until uh, maybe a couple weeks. I don't know if I'm going to get much gaming in today. I was supposed to go cover it, uh, not today, this weekend. Duh. I don't know how much gaming I might get in this weekend because I was supposed to cover Adepticon in Schaumburg, Illinois. And uh, right now I can't drive until I talk to my cardiologist on the 29th. So not doing that. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get over to uh, my brother Greg's house to play some with my nephew and his friends. I don't know yet. All right, so we've got the versus duel, starting a duel, how to duel, examples and card clarifications. I don't recall uh, the original Grimslingers having as many um, examples as far as images. Because if I remember correctly, when I was, yeah, I, yeah, I am remembering correctly. When I first st uh, started to learn how to play Grimslingers, I actually had to go check out Stephen S. Gibson's uh, videos to uh, to learn how to play it. Because it was just, it's a, it's a really cool game, but I don't know, it's just something about the rules weren't clicking in my head. All right, so we've got the solo and co-op mode, the story booklet, the area booklet. Area movement, setting up an area, bounties, tall tale game space. Yeah, see, I I don't recall setting up so much stuff for uh, the multiplayer co-op. Got adventure turns, creature duels, resolving a creature duel, talking about the creature duel turn. I will admit, Grimslingers is not the sort of game that you can just jump right into. Now, the just the dueling aspect of the game is relatively easy to wrap your heads around. And uh, you may actually be able to find the, uh, the little introduction to the system, which is Grimslingers Duels, uh, somewhere online through, like, the secondary market. Anyway, so we've got the items in the Tall Tale, Defeat, Game over, ending a game session, continuing from a previous session, and, and clarifications for Tall Tales, plus a glossary at the end. So all in all, you're really looking about 36 pages, 35 pages of rules. So as I mentioned, not as, not as easy to jump into as some other card games may be out there, but I will point out, it's well worth it. <laughs> so... All right, so we're just going to take a quick peek. Talking about the Northern Territories. So we've got Red River, Gates of Hell, the Northern Outskirts, the Great Deep, Down Under, and Valley of Death. Talking about the area layout. Oh, it looks like, uh, well, maybe we won't look too closely into this. It looks like uh, we've got some of the create your own adventure stuff going on. So, but uh, this is the new territory uh, with an all new uh, campaign that can be solo or you can also uh, play through it co op. And we got the campaign booklet. I'll just zip through this real quick. So, nothing's going to be given away. Chapter one. Got different skull path from preface, llama path. So, yeah, just kind of give you an idea here. It's what about 27 pages? Eh, 26. 
All right, so got all of these. There's a lot packed into this box. I can tell you that right now. When I first received it, uh, I picked it up. I was like, whoa, hey, that's that's quite a bit heavier than I was expecting. All right, so. Huh, we got an achievement tracker. There's a whole pad of paper here. Progress tracker. There you go. Nice. So, yes, there is a bit of an RPG element to the game if you want to play through the campaign. Uh, I'll have to also point out that if you just want to make it kind of a dueling game, it's it's perfectly fine that way, too. So we've got some bigger cards here. Look, passive space. Oh, each player now gets... Yeah, each player is getting one of these mats. Kind of a mat. So we got the green, the pink, rainbow, red. Huh. Interesting. Then we got modifiers, creature port portrait, dispositions. This should be. I'm taking a wild stab. I, I believe we should be looking at this. Maybe you're using these with the uh, with the campaign. Because you've got the creature portrait. Because you're not going to utilize creatures unless you're playing the solitaire or the co-op campaign. Hey, you know we got some cool art. Got a nice, uh, nice little uh, card with... Uh, Stephen Gibson's artwork on it. Nice. That's cool. Very nice. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these cards here. And a six-sided die. This looks really like an old-school six-sider. As you notice, it's kind of yellowed. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. I'm sure that's intentional. Okay. opened up here yep I've got plenty of goodies from Greenbrier games that uh, I'll be taking a look at because I've got of uh, dreams and shadows which looks pretty cool another pretty hefty fantasy game from Greenbrier and then I also have the first expansion for that, which is the Monster Within. And those are both out. I do want to also point out that uh, this expansion for Grimslingers is in stores right now. It does carry an MSRP of $29.95. Looks like uh, you're getting quite a bit. Getting quite a bit in this for your $30. Okay. So we've got all different sorts of cards here. All right, all right, all right. Special event. Legendary key. Landmark. Attack. Events. It's been a while since I played Grimslingers, and I swear it looks like there are quite a few different new twists included in it. All right, so this is the Fate deck. I think we got some more Fate cards, too. Take a look. All right, so these are the new characters. Okay. Adventure turn reference cards. What's that? Ooh, Demon Scourge, a Demon Scourge. Okay, and then we've got just a few more of the Fate cards for All right. Luella and the Gaia Mind. Skill card. So we've got some skill cards. What do we have? Four new characters? Cute Kipper. <laughs> Told you you could play as a dog. So these are all the skill cards here. Let's see what else we got. Creature Dispositions. Creature modifiers. Right. 
bullet chamber, ammo belt. Okay, the Gaia mind, weather the strong and unwilling sa oh, a life for a life and unwilling sacrifice. Beast, Gaia Mind, Current Control, Current Durability. All right, so there we go. Here we got the cat. So the cat skill cards here. And then La Fleur Noir and the Professor. I think the Professor is this big <laughs> bear. So these are the skill cards. So taking a look. And of course, you're going to be able to, as you're playing through the campaigns and that, you're able to purchase new skills. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Nice. All right. So we've got that. What in the world was that? Because it looks like, almost looks like orcs. They're goblins. Peak. Yeah, angsty goblins. Some of the creatures that you're going to encounter. Sweet. A wisp. Booger Brigade. Huh? Okay, so here, Peril Waits. Okay. See, now, you got to keep in mind that a lot of these cards that I'm taking a look at here uh, will come into play in the campaign. Like the creatures and things like that. See, okay, so we've got general creature skills. We've got the wisp, soul hunter, new new tower. It's like a minotaur, magic mushroom. Ah. Bebopnid, bebopnid. So it's like a giant spider. And the angsty goblins. So these are new creatures that are inc included in this new campaign. Nice. There's a whole lot of goodies in here. And we've got some reference cards. Looks like we've got two reference cards here for the adventure turn. Nice. Take a look at some of the skills. Charge chamber. This is for the cat, feline springboard, gun catta. <laughs> uh, cardstock's pretty nice too. Not uh, not cheap and chintzy. Pretty good cardstock. But of course, like any card game, if you're going to play it quite a bit, you're going to definitely want to sleeve the cards. Okay, so we've got the various different characters. There we go. Got the monsters, creatures, I should say. And then their skill cards. Got creature modifiers and creature dispositions here. Yeah. Got the parallel weights. Adoring fan. Yay. Angelic encounter, a rare beast. So even with um, the kind of. Uh, create your own adventure vibe to the kind of the adventure books because you have a variety of different cards that you're utilizing throughout the game you get a lot of replayability from the campaigns so oh, what was that there we go all right something popped up on my monitor again too new i got i should go in my um firewall and block I keep getting this little like box that pops up and it's like, oh, hey, the new update for whatever is available to buy. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't want it. All right. So we've got Bebop Crystal, Demon Ash. Here are some of the items. Mushroom Brain. Oh, this is, you would get these. It looks like you're, you would get these when you, you uh, dispatch these creatures. Helm of the Undying. Nice. Very nice. I am going to have to study to see what exactly has changed with uh, the original Grimslingers and uh, this new expansion. 
So we got plenty of cards. We've got these player mats and what appeared to be a, a couple of mats if you're playing the campaign game. We've got these two pads, the progress tracker and the achievement tracker, and uh, you got quite a few. That's kind of cool. That's nice. We've got that. Then we've got the Child of Light campaign booklet, the Northern Territory area booklet, the rule booklet, and once again, some pretty cool artwork as an addition. Hey, maybe I'll just put it up right, you know, right here, right behind me, right there. <laughs> and that is what we find when we take everything from Grimslingers, the Northern Territory, outside the box. And as I mentioned, there is a lot packed into that box. Uh, it's hefty. It's a, it's hefty. With of course with all those cards and that it would have to be, but seems like there's quite a bit packed in there for the twenty nine dollars and ninety five cents. Once again, as I mentioned, Grim Slingers: The Northern Territory is in stores right now. It came out on the seventh. So if you're a fan of Grim Slingers, by all means, take a look at picking it up. Uh, if you have not played Grim Slingers, check out my review on thegaminggang.com because I really, really dug it. Got to be honest, I probably haven't played it in about f three, four months. So, and playing all these different games, sometimes I forget how uh, some games I haven't played in a while. You know, all the exact mechanics and that. But uh, definitely check out the review. And if you're interested, maybe take a look to see if you can kind of get a combo of both games together. So just something to point out there. All right, so that is pretty much much it for today. And uh, I should point out when you're not watching The Daily Dope, be sure to go visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff MacLear. I will be back tomorrow, which is Friday, and I will be doing a review finally for the epic card game from White Wizard Games. So until tomorrow, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.